A warm welcome to our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. I'm Amarachi Ubani and you're watching Channels Television. We begin with developments in the Russian invasion of Ukraine over the last couple of hours. First off, head of the Moscow-installed regional administration in Zaporizhia says radiation levels around the nuclear plant remains normal after Kyiv and Moscow accused each other of striking the facility. This is coming after Ukraine's state energy company, Enoguatom says the nuclear power complex was shelled again, putting the blame on Russian forces that seized the area in March. Enoguatom says the plant's area was struck five times, including near the site where radioactive materials are stored, but that no one was injured and the situation at the place remains under control. Meanwhile, Ukraine's special envoy for the Middle East is warning Arab countries against what he calls Russian meddling in regional affairs, accusing Moscow of sending mercenaries to the region in order to plan coups and plunder these countries' wealth. The envoy, Maxim Subak, made an address to the Arab League via video conference weeks after the group hosted Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, and also blamed Moscow for preventing Ukrainian wheat deliveries to the region. Finally, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has called for immediate end to military activity near the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant in Ukraine and to not target its facilities or surrounding. Well, we had President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky calling on Western countries to support Ukraine's war efforts with weapons, money and sanctions against what he called Russia's nuclear terrorism. President Zelensky made the comments after Russia and Ukraine accused each other this week of shelling the Zaporizhia nuclear power plants currently under Russian occupation. He accused Russia of holding nuclear power stations hostage and firing cruise missiles over Ukraine's nuclear power plants and also called for sanctioning of Russia's nuclear industry, including including the nuclear, site, uh, nuclear state enterprise Rosatom. In the meantime, Britain and Denmark say they will provide more financial and military aid to Ukraine, making the pledges as European defence ministers met in Copenhagen today to discuss long-term support for the country's defence against Russia's invasion. The Danish Prime Minister said his country will increase its financial aid to Ukraine by 110 million euros. Britain, which already has donated advanced weapon systems to Ukraine and given thousands of its troops military training, says it will send more multiple launch record, uh, rocket systems. But uh, back to President Volodymyr Zelensky. He's promised Ukraine will respond to the Russian shelling of a town and needs to consider how to inflict as much damage on Russia as possible to end the war quickly. Ukrainian officials say 13 people died and 10 were wounded when Russia fired rockets at Marinets uh, from the territory of a nuclear power plant. It is captured in the Dnipro. Trosk region. Attack is said outline the need for allies to supply more powerful weapons to the Ukrainian military. But unilateral sanctions imposed by the United States and Western countries against Russia will not bring peace but will only isolate themselves. And the short sighted policy will also expose the European countries to very severe challenges. So says co founder of the Transnational Foundation for Peace and Future Research in Lund, Sweden, Jan Oberg. Oberg says the European countries are paying a heavy price, such as price hikes and social turmoils, by imposing sanctions on Russia, and these sufferings are brought by the US-led NATO rather than Russia. 26 countries, uh, as well as the European Union, have met here in Copenhagen and have sent a clear uh, signal. Ukraine's fight is our fight. We stand together and we stand with Ukraine. We condemn Russia's brutal attack in the strongest possible way, and we will continue to assist Ukraine in its military needs. In total, particip participants today have committed more than 1.5 billion euros to the table for Ukraine. I am satisfied with the conference and with the results. A lot of information is classified, so I cannot discuss it openly, but we reached clear initiatives and commitments on demining. We agreed upon long-term and mid-term activity. Uh, these terms are also related to armaments production, and I am glad uh, that we all have common sense 
that there is no time for fatigue. That is marathon. For marathon, you need energy. And frankly speaking, the main energy in this case is money. Our partners know that we need funding and they um, articulated readiness to support us financially. But it is also the case that Russia are starting to fail in many areas. They have failed so far and are unlikely to ever succeed in occupying uh, Ukraine. Their invasion has faltered and constantly been remodified to the extent they are really only focusing in parts of the south and in the east, a long, long way away from their three-day so-called special operation. Three days are now over 150 days and nearly six months in. The Danish Prime Minister, the Swedish uh, representative of the Swedish government, as well as uh, Britain, on their remarks about financial and military aid to Ukraine uh, earlier today at a meeting in Copenhagen. Now, while efforts are being made to get Ukrainian and Russian officials back to the negotiating table for peace talks, Russia has ruled out any attempts by Switzerland. The Russian foreign ministry today said Switzerland could not represent Ukrainian interests in Russia and Moscow's interests in Ukraine because it no longer is a neutral country. The foreign ministry representative told reporters Switzerland unfortunately has lost its status of neutral country and can be neither a mediator nor representative of interests. It's known that Berlin joined illegal Western sanctions against Russia. It supports anti-national Nazi regime in Kyiv, participates in an aggressive Russophobic campaign organized by Western Ukraine. It's absolutely unclear how can Bern offer to be a mediator, representative or other kind services with this kind of attitude. Well, Russian military strikes on Ukrainian cities have increased in recent weeks. Here's a report on this week's latest so far. Pro-Russian separatists have accused the Ukrainian forces of shelling a brewery in the occupied city of Donetsk, killing one person and triggering a leak of ammonia on Wednesday night. The emergencies ministry in the Russian-backed self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic says a shell hit an ammonia line late at night, sparking a fire that at one point covered 600 square meters. Flames were seen lighting the sky above one part of the city, as well as firefighters donning masks. In another clip, a corpse is seen on the ground. Over in the Kharkiv region, Ukraine's National Guard servicemen used anti-craft cannon against Russian troops. One of the servicemen and one of the anti-aircraft guns crew says it was unusual use of the weapon. Ukraine, which has stepped up its drive to retake Russian-controlled regions in the south, said last week it saw evidence Moscow was redeploying its forces to defend the captured territory. Meanwhile, Ukrainian officials say Russia is attacking scores of civilian and military targets in its bid to establish full control over Ukraine's Luhansk and Donetsk regions in the east, with 120 rockets hitting the area around the town of Nikopol overnight. Dnipropetrovsk governor Valentin Rezhenko said on Instagram that three people were killed and seven wounded by shelling in Nikopol when 120 grade rockets hit the area. And as President Volodymyr Zelensky says plans are underway for a major counter-offensive to retake the southwestern city of Kherson, Ukrainian officials are encouraging residents living in areas around an imminent huge battle to flee. However, some Ukrainians are reluctant to leave their homes. Many homes in the region have been blighted by Russian shelling. Locals say officials are telling them to leave as it is risky for residents to live so close to the front line. Finally, satellite images have been released showing damages made to the Russian Seki airbase in Crimea. One senior Ukrainian official suggested a series of explosions at the Seki airbase in Crimea could have been the work of partisan saboteurs as Kiev denies any responsibility for the incident deep inside Russian-occupied territory. The VOA's Anna Chenikova joins us now. Anna, let's begin with the latest attacks and this back and forth uh, with the attacks and counterattacks, especially around these Zaporizhia power plants. 
Is the plant still under protection of Russian forces? Good evening. Um, well, I would, it's difficult to say that the Parisian power plant is under protection. It's under Russian uh, control of the Russian forces. However, um, international society and international atomic energy uh, agency uh, are just uh, Ukraine, um, Russia to allow access uh, for control because Ukrainian side, uh, Ukrainian officials cannot uh, get access to the site. Uh, and similarly, international um, society, I mean, international uh, atomic energy uh, officials as well. Uh, so uh, for the moment, uh, we know and just in uh, information that it was uh, the force shelling of the, the Parisian power, power plant uh, just during today. Uh, Russian forces, uh, unfortunately, continue to shell the territory. Uh, we know that the, la the latest shelling... Um, hit the territory very close to the first um, uh, power um, uh, power block. Uh, and uh, th this is extremely dangerous. Um, three previous shelling also hit the territory of the power plant, particularly the pumping station and uh, fire station next to the power plant. So it's, uh, uh, all of this is very close to each other. Um, the reason for that, uh, well, uh, of course, we, we cannot uh, know for sure, but today we know that it will be a UN meeting on, uh, on this case. And, uh, um, well, unfortunately, Russian forces are just showing that, um, well, probably they are, I don't know, trying to highlight um, uh, that, you know, this case is still uh, under quite a dangerous um, situation. Uh, and uh, the air raid siren is on again uh, while we're speaking. So, uh, well, it could be it could be a sign of some additional attacks. Uh, in general, if we look at the at the, at the territory of Ukraine, most of attacks uh, continue to happen in the south, in particularly Mykolaiv region, uh, also the Parisia region and the Parisia power plant uh, specifically. Uh, we also see uh, the attacks in Kharkiv region and Donbas. Donbas remains a very hot spot uh, in line with Kherson region. President uh, Zelensky uh, today, or probably last night, I think it's today though, um, did say uh, countries should regard Russia, uh, he referred to Russia's nuclear terrorism, and that's because of the attacks close enough to Zaporizhia. Who were the allies with him on this? Uh, well, as we heard already, uh, the report and the announcement from the International Atomic en uh, Energy Agency that uh, at least Russia has to give access because um, this organization uh, basically confirms that uh, Russia put this uh, biggest uh, in Europe uh, atomic power plant at risk, nuclear power plant at, at risk. Uh, and uh, international community, international leaders uh, continue to repeat this t t thesis a a a as well that uh, Russia should uh, give back the control for this plant uh, of this plant for Ukraine. So I guess we can consider this as the as the alliances uh, for with Ukraine and with uh, Ukrainian president in particular, because uh, here in Ukraine, you know, and President Zelensky uh, has already mentioned it a lot of times. Um, uh, we have people have a an experience of such kind of catastrophes, like, I mean, Chernobyl, and uh, people understand uh, how how dangerous it is, and people understand what consequences it can, it can uh, bring. Uh, and taking into consideration that this power plant is the biggest in Europe, and it's much bigger than Chernobyl, uh, if anything happened there, uh, it will be a very bad uh, consequence, not, not only for Ukraine but also for Europe and uh, maybe even for the whole world. It will only depend on the, you know, on the wind and uh, on the weather conditions. So um, international community definitely understand the danger, the risks, and uh, 
as we can see from and he, uh, from what we hear and from uh, from the official uh, rhetorics, uh, Ukrainian um, international community, in particular J7, yesterday J7 um, representatives of the, the ministers of J7 countries uh, encouraged once again uh, Russia to give back control to Ukraine of this plant. And uh, I guess we can consider this as uh, as uh, a sign of uh, of support for Ukraine and Ukrainian president uh, in this uh, particular case. Yeah, and 120 rockets and a hit in Luhansk and Donetsk regions of Ukraine. Officials are saying Russian forces have been targeting schools of civilians and military targets. Why is it difficult to prove, though, that Russia is behind those attacks? Because they keep, you know, denying that. Uh, Moscow did recognize these regions as autonomous, right? Uh, yes, just before the invasion, uh, the full-scale invasion, uh, Russia recognized these territories as, uh, as autonomous. Uh, neither Ukraine nor other countries did so. Uh, I mean, European countries and the U.S. Um, uh, you know, um, it's it's not really difficult um, for experts to uh, particularly, you know, say who who. Uh, who is responsible for the shelling or for the particular attack because analysis is always uh, going with the use of satellites and um, with, an, with, the, uh, with the analysis of uh, how the rocket hit from which side and so on and so forth. Uh, of course, Russia denies and Russia did not, well, never basically confirmed that they are responsible for any of the attacks. But uh, Ukrainian officials, uh, military officials, uh, I mean, uh, usually provide um, satellite images and international uh, um, intelligence uh, reports uh, in support of their own reports. Um, so uh, for Ukraine and for international society, uh, usually there is no question who is responsible for particular attacks. Of course, there are some attacks when uh, it's not, not possible to independently uh, verify or to check. But uh, in general, usually satellite images and, uh, and intelligence reports, uh, which are uh, not only Ukrainian, of course, uh, usually create the whole picture. And uh, unfortunately, we see confirmed information from various sources uh, that Russian forces um, shell a lot of civilian areas, especially in Donbas, uh, because for the moment they're trying to advance uh, and they haven't succeeded for the past weeks. Has Ukraine been conducting counterattacks on Russian targets as well? Yes, uh, definitely. And uh, Ukrainian military officials confirmed that, and President Zelensky himself confirmed that, uh, especially in Kherson region. Uh, and we hear a lot about counteroffensive actions. Uh, and um, yesterday, uh, President Zelensky, uh, not only yesterday, in the previous days, and also Minister of Defense, um, all the Ukrainian officials, basically, they have the same rhetoric and the same information that Ukraine will continue to uh, the counteroffensive actions. And actually, um, well, everyone are expecting some, you know, advances, but of course we're not, never going to get any details on uh, the dates or time when uh, this, you know, actions should happen. Uh, but definitely, we hear that, uh, for example, uh, for the past uh, for the past day, uh, Ukrainian forces um, uh, proceeded with certain attacks in Kherson region, destroying. Um, some military bases and military equipment uh, warehouses in uh, on the ter on the occupied territories of Kherson region. So we hear a lot of that, and we hear hear similar things um, that are happening at Donbas region. So definitely, Ukrainian army is um, is also uh, advancing at certain areas and uh, trying to advance and. Um, proceeding with the attacks. This is not uh, just defending uh, war at the moment. Anna, thank you so much for your reports and do stay safe. Thank you.